Let's start with chapter 8. This chapter is about solutions. We'll cover um, electrolytes and non-electrolytes, discuss solubility, concentrations, uh, dilutions, and then uh, we'll discuss one of the properties of solution, osmosis. What is a solution? A solution is a homogeneous mixture of um, two or more substances. We have two important parts in a solution. We have a solute and a solvent. The solute are spread throughout the, the solvent. The sol solute is not visible, even though it could give some color to the solution. The solvent is present in the largest amount. Here we can see examples of some uh, solutions. We can have gas in gas, gas in liquid, liquid in liquid, solid in liquid, and solid in solid. Not all the solutions that we deal with are a solid dissolved in a liquid. We have different types of solutions. Let's identify the solute in each one of the following solutions. Please remember that the solvent is present in the largest amount, the solute is present in the smallest amount. So when we have two grams of in 100 milliliters of water, the solute is gonna be the two grams of sugar. 60 milliliters of ethyl alcohol in 30 of methyl alcohol, then methyl alcohol is gonna be the solute. 55 milliliters of water, 1.50 grams of uh, sodium chloride, so the solute is sodium chloride. And then we have air, 200 milliliters of oxygen, 800 of nitrogen, so the solute is oxygen. Water is the most common solvent in nature, is polar as we learned previously, and it forms hydrogen bonds between molecules of water. In order to form a solution, the solute and the solvent must have like polarities. What does that mean? It means that if we have a solute that is polar, it will dissolve in solvents that are polar. If the solute is nonpolar, it will dissolve in solvents that are nonpolar. For example, water is a polar solvent. It will dissolve polar solutes. Water will mix with methanol. If we see the structure of methanol, this brings polarity. This that we are learning now is known, is known as the like dissolve like. Two substances will form a solution if they have the same kind of polarity. Polar solvents with polar solutes and nonpolar solvents with nonpolar solutes. For example, here we have water that is polar and here is dichloromethane which is nonpolar. They won't mix. In this over here we have water and iodine that is nonpolar, it won't dissolve. And then here we have um, nickel to nitrate which is polar and with um, dichloromethane they won't mix because they don't have similar polarities. So let's analyze if these compounds will dissolve or not in water. Sodium sulfate, this is an ionic compound. Ionic compounds are polar so yes it will dissolve in water because it's polar. Gasoline is non-polar. No, it will not dissolve in water because water is polar. I2 iodine is non-polar. Therefore, it won't dissolve in water. And hydrochloric acid, yes, it will dissolve in water because it's a polar compound. This brings us to the next part of, um, of this chapter, which is electrolytes and non-electrolytes. When we have solutions in water, Strong electrolytes are those that separate and in ions and they conduct electricity. Weak electrolytes are those that produce only few ions and the non-electrolytes are those that do not dissociate in solution and they do not conduct electricity. So solutes that are strong electro electrolytes dissociate 100% in water. So for example, it's hard to see here, but if we have sodium chloride, when we put this in water, it will dissociate into sodium cations and chloride anions. The, this is a very strong electrolyte. It will dissociate completely in water 
and it will um, um, conduct electricity. For example, calcium bromide. Calcium bromide will dissociate in water. Calcium, calcium is in group 2, so its charge is 2 plus, and then bromide is Br with a negative charge, so we have two of those. B is a strong electrolyte, it will dissociate in water, and it will conduct electricity. Let's complete the dissociation of the following solutions, uh, solvent, solutes. Calcium is in group 2, so it will be um, 2 plus, so they are all the same options here. Chlorine is in group 7, its charge is negative 1. So how many chlorines do we have? We have 2, So, and that is not a sub subcrate, right? That is a, a number of moles, so the option is C. Potassium is in group, group, group 1, so its charge is plus 1, so, and we have 3 of them. So it could be A or B, and then we look at phosphate. The charge of phosphate is 3 minus, um, so it could be A or B. What is the only difference here is AQ or solid. AQ means that it will dissociate completely in water. It will be in solution, so the only possible answer will be A. Weak electrolytes are those that do not dissolve completely in water. They will not conduct electricity um, as well as um, um, the strong electrolytes. These compounds, when in water, they don't dissociate completely, so we use this type of arrow to show that the reaction could be reversible. Non-electrolytes are those that will not form ions in solution. They will not dissociate to have charges and they will not conduct electricity at all. So the classifications, we could have strong electrolytes, those dissociate completely and they conduct electricity. Weak electrolytes, they dissociate partially and they conduct electricity, electricity weakly. And the non-electrolytes, they do not dissociate and they do not uh, conduct electricity.